you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message today is the gospel lesson which was read a moment ago, Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 7. Don't put your bulletins too far away. You'll need them. I need to let you in on a little secret. Therefore, you must listen very closely to what I'm about to tell you. Listen very closely. Aaron Rodgers is a good quarterback. <laughs> now, there should be a collective duh coming up from the assembly today, because after all, it's only been since, what, July, that we've heard almost daily of the ex uh, exploits of this young quarterback from Northern California. He has indeed taken the Packers to the cusp of something incredibly special. For in a matter of just a few hours, he will be the starting quarterback in the Super Bowl, playing for a team that hails from a town that modestly calls itself Tiger Town. With all of these accomplishments, however, there have come expectations. After all, he did take over for one of the best, if not most, maddening quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. And while in his first couple of years the team results were not necessarily exactly what we, the fans, would have wanted, because after all this is just his first Super Bowl, uh, he did his part. His passing yards were up, his touchdowns were up, his interceptions were down. He did his job. He gave the Packers a chance to win. And he did all of this while struggling under the burden of expectation. For you see, until this year, he was a quarterback that never won a, never, never won a playoff game. Until this year, he was a quarterback that had never taken his team to the NFC Championship game. Until this year, he had never captained a team to an NFC Championship. And until this year, he had not won a Super Bowl. <laughs> Well, whatever happens this afternoon, we know that this is a young man who has lived with expectations, expectations that at times almost become unrealistic. Because we watch it on TV from the comfort of our easy chair and we flip through ESPN, sometimes we lose sight of just what this young man has already accomplished. <coughs> You understand, he is one of only 32 adult males who serve in this role as starting quarterback in the NFL. You can cast the net just a little bit wider and the, st the stats are, are no less spectacular. He is only one of 1,696 adult men who get to play football for a living. Compare that to the population of our country, 300 million. And he is one of 1,696 or one of 32. That is an accomplishment. Here is a young man through his work and his effort has risen to the pinnacle of his profession. And if he doesn't win today, he will still bear the burden of unmet, unrealistic expectations. You know, it doesn't seem fair. Someone who has come this far, being held to such an almost impossible standard. And it's that, that same kind of rationale that can take us to our text today. See, as we look at this section from Matthew chapter 5, again, the earlier portions of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, we run across at the very end of that text, verse 20, Something that could be exceedingly unrealistic for us. Grab your bulletins, or if not, grab your Bible. Especially if you have your Bible, this is good too. 
If you don't have your Bible, you should. But if you don't, grab your bullets and it'll work. Look at, the, look at that last lesson. See the expectation that Jesus puts on those who will follow after him. <coughs> Here's what Jesus says. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now that's a tall order. We don't have Pharisees and scribes running around today, but in that day, the original hearers of these words would have seen this as not unto impossible because the scribes and the Pharisees were considered the model of righteousness. Because these were the guys who had dedicated their lives to studying the law of God. They knew it forwards and back. Well, not Hebrew, it would be forwards and backwards. They knew every jot, every dot. And not only did they know it, they put it into practice. They knew just how many steps they could take on the Sabbath and not break the law until they stayed under them. They knew all of the dietary restrictions. So if they went to a Super Bowl party today, they would not have pulled pork. They knew all of the ins and outs of the religious sacrificial system. And they followed it so meticulously, so religiously, as they carried out those sacrifices just the way God had intended to them. In the eyes of the people, the scribes and the Pharisees were the height of righteousness. And now Jesus says to them, if you don't exceed their righteousness, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. In their ears, this would have been an unrealistic, impossible expectation. And it's the same for us, too. Because we know who we are. We are anything but models of righteousness. We're the ones who like to live our lives up to the line and over the line of God's law. To come to any other conclusion than this is to lie to ourselves. But then again, isn't that why St. John wrote, wrote what he wrote in 1 John 1, verse 8? When he says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. See, now we don't like to think of ourselves like this. Because after all, we try. We know that we don't possess a righteousness that surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees. But we do have a righteousness that, that surpasses the, the righteousness of some people. <coughs> I know that my righteousness surpasses that of mass murderers because I have a committed mass murder. You know? We know that our, 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 our righteousness exceeds that of the serial adulterer because we're faithful to our spouse or we don't live together without the benefit of marriage. We know that our, 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 our righteousness exceeds that of the people who cheat on their tests and on their taxes because we don't do that either. So often we want to treat our, our pursuit of righteousness like that of running away from the bear. When you're running from a bear, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just have to be faster than the other guy. <laughs> but this is not the standard that Jesus lays for. It is not enough to exceed the righteousness of the next man. He says, unless you exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, if you find this a passage too difficult to listen to, if you find it a passage that lays out an expectation that is impossible, you are right. Of ourselves, we do not possess this surpassing righteousness. We can't live this way of ourselves. There is no way that we can even come close to the external righteousness of these religious men, let alone 
any kind of the internal righteousness that Jesus would expect. 